In this tutorial, we will go through the color editor's basic and advanced tabs. This is a great tool for selecting specific colors or color ranges and modifying their hue, saturation and lightness. It can also be used to create layer masks. In this tutorial, we will focus on the basic and advanced tabs. The basic tab has eight color ranges and one covering the whole spectrum. Any range can be selected and edited using any of the three sliders. Note that the sliders are dynamic, indicating the effect that each of the sliders will have. So for example, we can see in the hue slider, if I move it to the left, it will transform the colors as indicated on the slider. Let's reset the adjustments here and show you an alternative method. The direct color editor can also be used and may complete the task in a faster way. First select it here, and then click on the color that you want to edit. Momentarily, a cursor pops up indicating that you can drag horizontally or vertically. So for example, if I drag downwards, that will reduce the saturation of my selected color. Note an additional advantage of using the direct color editor is that it can choose more than one color range at a time to edit. Additionally, if I drag horizontally, that's going to affect the hue slider. So if I drag to the right, that's going to move my hue slider to the right and also affect the hue. So let's actually increase the saturation a little more, like so. To change the lightness, I just need to hold Alt or Option on my keyboard. So if I drag downwards, that's going to darken the red tones. Now, if you want to be reminded what each axis does, simply right click and you can change the preference for each one and also change the sensitivity. A higher sensitivity just means your cursor movements don't have to be as exaggerated or vice versa. For maximum control and precision, best results can be achieved in the advanced tab. It varies from the basic tab in that you first need to define a color range. Do this by using the color picker here and clicking on the tone you want to edit. Immediately a range appears, but that's just a suggestion and can be edited. Now before editing, it's best to turn on view selected color range. Anything that's not part of the color range selection is shown as black and white. To visualize how the color range selection works, let's make a pick on this color chart and enable view selected color range. The width of the selection controls what colors will be affected, while the depth of the selection controls the saturation range. Let's get back to editing. The current selection is just the yellows and oranges, but I can easily expand it to include the greens too. The first slider smoothness controls the fall off of the selected range into neighboring colors. It's indicated by this fuzzy edge here on our range selection. It prevents hard edges when adjusting these neighboring colors. In this case, it's probably about right, but you can see the effect as I adjust the slider. So let's bring that back up to a good level around here. I'm happy with my selection now, so I'll turn off view selected color range and just increase the saturation a little. Up to 30 individual color picks can be made, so I'll do one more as I'd like to change the hue of the greens. So once again, I'll take the color picker, click on the color I want to edit. If I turn on view selected color range, we can see we've just isolated the greens. Now I want to make sure I've got the full saturation range so I'll just bring up the range like so. Don't feel the need to always adjust the color range, but it's definitely worth having a quick check by turning on view selected color range, just to make sure it's editing the range that you wish. Okay, so I'm happy with that. So I'll turn off view selected color range and just tweak the hue of the greens a little. In this photo, I'd like to improve the saturation of the raspberries a little. But even with a very careful color selection, the other red elements in the photo are definitely going to be edited too. 
but it's not an issue as color edits work equally well on a layer. So first of all, I'll reset this color edit and make a new layer and call that Raspberry Bowl. Next, I'll select my brush cursor tool. I just right click and make the brush a bit smaller and a little bit harder. And just quickly draw a mask on the raspberries here, like so. I'll hide my mask just by hitting M on the keyboard. And the same as before, I'll grab the color range picker. Click on the color I want to edit. And then I'll boost the saturation a little and also darken it slightly. I can comfortably edit those reds without affecting anything else. On this photo, which has a rather shallow depth of field, I'd like to improve the sharpening and structure a little on the berries. And one way to do that is to create a mask using the color editor, which I can then apply some sharpening adjustments to. Let's zoom in a little bit first of all, to get a better look. I'll start by picking the red colors as before, Turn on view selected color range. And as I want the stem as part of the selection, I'll expand the range out like so. Now, just to make sure I'll cut off some of the lower saturated colors, just to make my selection as fine as possible. There we go. Now it's possible I might have other elements of the photo as part of this color range selection, but once I create the mask, it's gonna be easy to clean those up. So now click on the color editor submenu and choose create mask layer from selection. This will transform the color range into a mask. Let's zoom back out and have a look at the mask. It's probably best visualized by looking at the mask in grayscale. So if we turn on display grayscale mask, we can see the mask that's been created. So we've got a good selection on the berries, but there's some other elements that we need to get rid of. That's very simple. I'll just use my erase mask brush, go over onto the photo, right click to make the brush larger, and then we just get rid of these elements like so. And also down here, as I want to target my sharpening just on the berries. There we go. Let's zoom back in again. And one final trick we can do is to refine the mask. This will just improve the edges somewhat and blend in better to the surrounding. So I'll right click on the layer and choose Refine Mask. With the radius set to maximum, this will have the greatest effect at improving the edges. Now that might be a little bit too much, so I just pull this back down until I find a good compromise. I'm gonna go with that. So if I press M on my keyboard, this will hide the mask. Let's zoom in a little closer so we can judge our sharpening accurately. So I'll go over to my sharpening tool and just increase the sharpening on this layer. If we turn this layer off, then we can see before and after. Now, just because this layer was created using the color editor, it can still be edited just like any other layer as you've seen before. So for example, if I wanted to include the blackberries here, I could just grab my brush, right click to reduce the size a little, and then paint in the mask here, like so, just on the sharper areas.